a little bit of homework help for unit three, lesson five, reviewing the practices of writing equations, solving equations. We're talking about slope. First off, a restaurant offers delivery for their pizzas. The total cost is a delivery fee added to the price of pizzas. One customer pays $25 to have two pizzas delivered. Another customer pays $58 for five pizzas. And then finally, a customer that paid $80. The question is, how many pizzas did they get? The one piece of information that I wish that I knew is how much was that delivery fee? In order to find that $80 is figuring out how many pizzas. I really need to know that delivery fee because it's not included in here. To be able to find that, let's go ahead and start with a simple table. We're going to say, let X be the number of pizzas and let Y be the cost. Two pizzas was $25, five pizzas is $58, and then the unknown amount of pizzas is $80. In order to find our value, we need to go from the beginning like we did before and we find the slope. So we're going to find from here to the change in Y or the change in X, $58 minus 25 divided by five minus two, 33 and three, which means that our cost per pizza is $11 per pizza. Now, how do I figure out my cost for the delivery fee? With that delivery fee, I want to consider this piece. If my total cost was $25 and that cost came as a result of $11 for two pizzas, then what am I paying for my delivery fee D? Well, if I take away these $22 for the pizzas and $22 from here, I find out that my delivery fee is $3. Now that's great because that helps me out with a couple things. First off, I have my slope, which is 11. And then I have what's called my y-intercept. Remember, that's that spot where the line crosses the y-axis, which is equal to 3. And with that information, I can go ahead and build an equation. The equation that I need from this is going to be, excuse me a second. With that information, I can write my equation. I know that my total cost of the pizzas is equal to $11 per pizza plus $3 of delivery. And knowing that, I can start to figure out some things. I can take now my $80 and I can substitute that for my total cost, trying to figure out how many pizzas did I actually buy and knowing that I paid a $3 delivery fee, let's get rid of the delivery fee first off so that I know how much money I spent just on pizzas, $77, for pizzas, if I divide that by $11 per pizza, I find out that I bought seven pizzas. Number two, for this question, you have a house painting company that's charging $500 for supplies. That's kind of a big deal right there. $500 for supplies, $50 per hour of labor. How much money would the company cost um, for a house that needs 20 hours of labor? One that needs 50 hours of labor. In order to do that, we need to pull out a couple of pieces of information. Again, remember that what we need out of this is we need to know our slope, and we need to know what's called our y-intercept. And that y-intercept is a way for us to think about where do I actually begin with my graph. In this case, we're talking about spending $500, no matter what. That's just a flat fee, that's a constant. Everybody pays that that has their house painted by this company. But we also know that we're spending $50 per hour. And with that, that hour, that hourly rate that we're talking about, we're talking about this happening. We're talking about if our house costs us a certain amount of money, why? We know that we're spending $500 plus $50 for every single hour that they work. And we know that we have an equation right here because uh, this, this equation can tell us for any house that they are going to paint will work out because no matter what, we're paying $500 just for supplies and then we're paying $50 an hour just for the house. With that information, what we can do is we can now go ahead and take our, our 20 hours of labor and we could say, okay, what's my total cost going to be for a house when they spend 20 hours on it? Well, if I spend $500 on supplies 
plus $50 for 20 hours, what I'm actually going to spend here is I'm going to spend $500 plus another $1,000 in labor, which means that I'm going to spend $1,500 to paint a house with 20 hours of labor. Your turn. Go and figure out how much will it cost you to paint a house with $50 or with 50 hours of labor. There's your equation. Now think about this next step, talking about the graph. Let's look about the, uh, the graph here that we're actually working with. We're trying to say which of the house or which of the following graphs represent the relationship between X, the number of hours it takes to painting a house um, with Y as the total cost. Well, I think if we just read the graphs at first, we might be thinking about, well, oh, they're the exact same graph, but look a little harder. Look at the labels. The labels tell us right away which one is wrong. We said X hours for Y dollars and Y dollars for X hours. If you'll notice, this is the X axis right here. And we put Y on the X, graph B is wrong. That's an automatic graph A is our choice. <clears throat> but let's talk about this slope. It says complete the statement about the slope of the line. The slope of the line is blank, which is the same as the price per blank. Well, when we look at these, is it a price per hour, minute, or day? And are we doing $50 an hour, $5 an hour, or sorry, $500 an hour, $5 an hour, or $50 an hour? <clears throat> Let me explain one more thing about this because it's kind of a big deal. Let's look at graph B and figure out why this one can't be right either. When we talk about the slope here, we talk about the slope is 1,000 over 20. Just the same as over here, 1,000 over 20. Except what we're talking about over here is $1,000. That's our rise over our run of 20 hours. So we're saying that 20 hours of labor is $1,000. Over here, we're talking about our rise, which we call as an X. That would mean that 1,000 hours of labor cost $20. I don't know about you, but here's the thing where this goes. When we talk about this one over here, this comes out to $50 per hour. This one over here is actually going to come out to a whopping total of two cents per hour. Not sure about you, but if I'm a painter, I certainly don't want to be making two cents per hour. So when we talk about this, the slope of the line is, well, it's definitely not two cents an hour. It's not five cents an hour. It's not $5 an hour or even $500 an hour because the $500 was for supplies. But when we're talking about this, we are going to be talking about slope of line is 50, okay? Because 1,000 divided by 20 is 50. It's the same price as the price per hour. Question three, we're talking about two different people running. We have Tyler and Elena. When we talk about Elena, we see her equation right here. <clears throat> I don't know how to pull it off right away, but when we're talking about Tyler's information is up above. So let's talk about Tyler and Elena. Let's figure out first off, what's Tyler's equation? We know that Elena, if she, her equation is for Elena, if she's saying Y equals eight and five tenths X, that means that she's running eight and five tenths miles per one hour. Actually, I guess it'd be the, a little bit different than that. It would be eight and five tenths minutes per one mile. Now, if we talk about Tyler, let's figure out his values. If we're talking about Tyler, here's eight. Here's where his line crosses per minute. Um, so let's go ahead and pull these in here and let's decide something. Uh, if this little mark right here is nine, and we're talking about one, two, there's three marks in between. 
that makes this mark right here one eight and one third. That means that when we talk about Tyler, his equation is going to be y equals his constant rate is eight and one third minutes per mile. So if we're going to be talking about these two pieces, now we know we can compare the two. Which one is actually faster? Tyler, eight and one third versus Elena, eight and five tenths. Now you might be thinking about this saying, why did he write a six? Um, what we want to be thinking about here is even though Tyler's time is less, that's what you want when you're running. So Tyler is faster than Elena. But then when we talk about who ran farther in 10 minutes, we have to take into consideration the piece that we're using both of their equations. To do that, find out how far did Elena run in 10 minutes, we're going to have Y is equal to eight and a half minutes per mile for 10 miles. And Tyler is going to be eight and one third minutes for 10 miles. Since we see down here a little bit further at saying who ran faster, we saw that that is in decimal form. So we really do want to go ahead and change this to a decimal. But when we do this as a decimal, don't do eight and three tenths, do eight and 33 hundredths. That way you get a more precise value. Go ahead and calculate those pieces and then answer the questions below. Who ran at a pace of eight and a half miles per minute? Who ran at a pace of eight and a third miles per minute? Person that ran faster than the training run is who? Finally, the last one talking about um, applying an equation, which equation down here below represents the line that passes through these two points. Um, we can already see that the slope is already calculated for us of one half. The question is, which of these two ordered pairs was used to write the rule? Since each of these rules, I see five and two in each of these. I know it's not six, seven, so they used five, two. Going back to our lesson when we talked about this, we talked about translation of this order pair from this point back to the origin zero, zero. And we talked about writing the rule that talks about what do you do to the Y coordinate to get to zero and what do you have to do to the X coordinate. And we talked about moving up and down and left and right. If we talk about two, five and two, five is approximately here. What would I have to do to get from this point back to the origin? We can see how would I write the rule that talks about going down five units and left five units. Choose whichever one of these rules represents this move down five, left two. That's all you got. Good luck.